Hi, I'm Brian Trenchard-Smith. This is Trailers from Hell. The success of Hammer's Technicolor versions of the Dracula and Frankenstein movies of the US box office prompted Universal to offer their whole library of classic horrors to Hammer to remake. First up was The Mummy, written by top in-house scribe Jimmy Sangster, never a favorite of the British Board of Film Censors. I quote an internal memo dated October 14, 1957, from censor Audrey Field in relation to Sangster's Dracula script. The uncouth, uneducated, disgusting, and vulgar style of Mr. Jimmy Sangster. I guess I imagine her as Oscar Wilde's Lady Bracknell somehow. She goes on to complain about the bloody fangs, and I quote, Why need vampires to be messier feeders than anyone else? What would she have made of true blood? When the script of The Mummy was submitted to the BBFC, Board Secretary John Trevelyan's response contained a long laundry list of cautions. Page 60. While we would accept the tongue being cut out off screen, we would not want a small piece of mangled bloody flesh held up afterwards for the public view. No, no, that would never do. The minutiae of film censorship and its attendant sociological implications are a particular fascination of mine, as you may have gathered. There was an ongoing chess game between Hammer and the British censors, with Hammer always trying to push the envelope. The BBFC had been criticised by conservative pundits for how much they'd let through on the Dracula and Frankenstein pictures. So director Terence Fisher went for a sinister atmosphere and implied violence, at least for the British version. When the censors viewed the black and white cutting copy, they initially thought it was tame enough to qualify for an A certificate, making the film bookable in 800 so-called family theatres that would not play X certificate films. Hammer were ecstatic, but a subsequent screening of a colour print with full sound changed the censors' minds, resulting in an X. Nonetheless, The Mummy was an even bigger box office success than Dracula in both the UK and the US markets. Here's the trailer. Egypt, 4,000 years ago. Hammer often made gorier versions of key scenes expressly for the Japanese market. Publicity stills exist of blood dripping from Christopher Lee's mouth, but the original footage has been lost. Made for a hundred thousand pounds sterling, the movie is an impressive achievement. Christopher Lee has said that The Mummy is the most beautiful looking picture Hammer ever made with the best music score. Certainly Franz Reisenstein's epic score and Jack Asher's rich photography, using a lot of colored gels, combined with Terence Fisher's stately direction, contributed greatly to the atmosphere. But it is Lee who dominates the movie. Restricted by complex facial makeup, which took an hour and a half each day, Lee had only his eyes to convey emotional changes from rage to sadness, and thus build sympathy for a man trapped by destiny into becoming a robotic killer. Adding to the challenge was the fact that the makeup adhered so tightly to his face that Lee could only get air to breathe through his eye holes. Eddie Powell came on board as his stunt double and continued doubling Lee for nearly 40 years. But Lee did many of his own stunts, smashing through windows of balsa wood and toffee glass and at one point nearly dislocating his shoulder when a prop door he was meant to burst through was mistakenly locked before the take. Lee said his daily discomfort moving around in the cumbersome mummy costume often produced a torrent of cursing underneath his makeup, which the camera didn't pick up but was quite audible in dailies. Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in their fourth movie together have great chemistry as usual. It was Cushing who suggested he ram that harpoon through the mummy's body. Yvonne Furneaux, whose biggest movie was Fellini's La Dolce Vita, plays the reincarnation of the Egyptian princess. In the climax, Lee has to carry her unconscious body into the Bray Studios swamp set. He recalls cursing up a storm as he stumbled over underwater pipes that expelled bubbles into the ooze, while Miss Furneaux is plaintively whispering, Don't drop me! Don't drop me! Horror can be quite a comedy in the making. 